We're turning back to our top story this morning, the total solar eclipse taken over Texas. Let's send things out to Mark and Marielle, who are at the Perot Museum in Dallas. Going to be packed out there in just a few hours. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. We've got a few of our closest friends here at the Perot Museum this morning. Mark Istook and Mario Ruiz here starting things off before the sun is even up. You've got a long day ahead of you. Yeah, so today we have special coverage. We're covering the eclipse as it's happening on WFAA Plus from noon until two in the afternoon. So we'll be here for the whole thing, Mark. Uh, we're going to see this place packed. I mean, it just started, but thousands of people are coming to downtown Dallas. Well, the excitement is palpable because you've got to go back to 1878 to find the last time North Texas saw a total eclipse. We won't see another eclipse even hit the state of Texas uh, total eclipse until 2045. You want to make the most of this one. A 9,190 mile path that starts way down the Pacific Ocean and ends up somewhere in the Atlantic uh, near Ireland as well. This is a lot to wrap your head around, but let's talk about what we're going to see here in North Texas. Uh, we have been talking about this for a while, what a big deal it is. You've got small towns in the state of Texas that are expecting their populations to double. You've got so much to look forward to. And when you talk about the specifics of this one, you've got an eclipse that begins at 1223. Right, so the eclipse the partial eclipse mark begins at 12:23. Totality begins at 1:40. It peaks at 1:42 and ends at 1:44. That's when you can see the eclipse without your solar glasses. So the partial eclipse does end at 3:02, meaning the moon will no longer block the sun at all. So how long will we actually spend in totality? Well, it depends on where you are. The areas with the longest times are east of Dallas. Places like Ennis, Kaufman, will spend more than four minutes and 20 seconds in totality. And in Dallas, three minutes and 51 seconds. In Fort Worth, that's two minutes and 24 seconds. So here is a big picture look at the path of totality for the whole country. It reaches from Texas up through Indiana and Ohio, parts of Pennsylvania, New York, all the way through Maine. And when you talk about the parts of Texas that are gonna see that extra few precious seconds of totality, some towns expecting their population to almost double. In fact, Dallas has already, already reported about 400,000 extra people in town. Kaufman County, Van Zandt County, both of them issuing disaster declarations trying to beef up their resources because of the surging crowds. DFW International Airport says its rental car partners are bracing for some of their busiest days ever. TxDOT expecting major delays on the roadways as well. We've seen campsites, hotels, and short-term rental properties booked full. So many people flocking to our state to enjoy for what so many people is a once in a lifetime event. And we have a front row seat to this, Mark. We've been waiting for this to happen for years, and the day is finally here. It is, and we've got you covered here on WFA and on Daybreak this morning. Chris Sadegi is getting you ready for the rest of the day. He's got a breakdown of some of the other fun events going on around North Texas. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Mark. There's going to be so many different ways to view this eclipse, celebrate this occasion. This one here in Mesquite, though, might be my favorite. Take a look at this picture. This was the scene July 29th, 1878 in Fort Worth at the Spotswood Lomax Farm. The men in that picture were trying to photograph the total eclipse, the last one we saw here in North Texas, the way many of us are going to try to photograph it today. But John Hall, look, he's even dressed for the occasion. He's going to try to do it the way those men did it back in 1878, and he's going to be doing it with this piece of equipment. Very similar to what Very they were similar. using back then? Yes, it's an exact reproduction with an authentic uh, 19th century lens. Okay, and once you take the picture, you got to get it developed. How are we going to do that? We're going to walk over here to Joseph Brown, and he's using the tintype method, the red room, all of that. So you said you can still do this in a matter of minutes. Oh. Under uh, 10 minutes, yes, right okay. away. Yeah. And the, the tin type kind of explained for us youngsters who weren't around in the 1800s when it was developed, how does it work? So this is one of the earliest processes of photography. So back in 1851, you would have come out and it would have been under about 12 minutes for you to experience a photographic experience. So it was the, the quickest way and uh, one of the first ways, so. We're doing it old school here in Mesquite. This is one of many events that's happening in Mesquite as a part of the solar eclipse rodeo. Coming up in 30 minutes, we're going to show you a lot more of the events going on across the area. But in the meantime, they told me before they photographed the eclipse, 
They're gonna take my picture using the tin type method, Tashara. So tune back in to see <laughs> how I look back in the 1800s. Oh, well, back Chris, to you. I'll be looking forward to that. I'm gonna bring it back new school because I know a lot of people plan to be on the road during today's eclipse, and there are some precautions that you need to take if you do plan to be out there. This may seem obvious to some of you, but please don't wear your eclipse glasses while you're driving, okay? They're very dark and you won't be able to see. If you want to look at the sun, you better go ahead and pull over and do not try to watch while you are driving. If you do stop the car, don't stop in the middle of the road. It seems self-explanatory, but we know some of y'all still gonna do it. Pull over, not on the shoulder of the highway. Of course, go ahead and get off of the road and finally expect a whole lot of traffic out there. It has already picked up in parts of Dallas. And you need to know there will be rolling closures as you make your way into downtown Dallas. This is happening from one to two o'clock this afternoon, and it's all to help with that traffic flow. This means all of those exit ramps off of the major highways into downtown, like 35E, I-30, Woodall Rogers, 75, they will close at that time. However, exit exits, I should say, out of downtown will remain open for you. So don't think you're going to try to catch a quick little glimpse of the E-Cliff off of 35 if you don't exit off the roadway way early on. D over to you. All right, Tashara, thanks for those tips. A reminder, our special coverage of the solar eclipse begins at noon today on WFAA Plus. At 1.30, we'll be carrying the eclipse live right here on WFAA. Now remember, totality here in Dallas will last almost four minutes from 1.40 until 1.44 p.m.